Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can save money by making over your furniture. Don't buy new. If you wanna learn how to make over your table for under $150, just keep watching. If you are new here, I have been painting furniture for a long time, and this table is one of the very first things that I ever painted, and it is definitely in need of a makeover. This was my husband's grandma's. It was probably bought in the 80s, and I've recently discovered that it is not real wood. So the only option here is to repaint this. So I thought this would be a really good time to show you if you have something old in your house that you wanna make over, you don't need a ton of stuff, you don't need a ton of skill, so it's gonna be very beginner friendly today. I'm gonna keep my table in the space today because all the products I'm using are low VOC and safe to use inside. So I'm just gonna take a drop cloth and protect my floor before I start working. When I originally finished this table, I sealed it with wax because that's what everybody did back then. It definitely is not super durable for a table you're gonna use every day. As you can see, I have grease stains and a lot of scratches. So this time around, I'm gonna seal it with something more protective, but to be able to paint over this finish, I have to remove that wax buildup that's on there. You can do this a number of ways. I'm gonna use, um, just regular rubbing alcohol. You can use mineral spirits. You can use denatured alcohol. So I'm just gonna get all that off before I start cleaning and prepping my piece to paint. The first very important step of any makeover when you're painting a piece of furniture is your piece needs to be really clean, especially if you don't know where it's been or if you've used a lot of cleaner on it or polish, we need to break all of that down. So the best way to do that is to take a TSP soap like this. We're gonna scrub everything down and then rinse it with water. Okay, I know cleaning is very boring, but it's a very important step in getting your paint to adhere correctly. And rinsing is part of cleaning. You can't just clean and let your soap sit on there. That's gonna affect the paint, especially with a TSP soap like White Lightning. You definitely need to get clean water and rinse the entire thing down to get that residue off. Now that everything is clean and dry, I'm gonna scuff sand. Now this is something that you don't necessarily have to do, but it's definitely insurance. It's definitely gonna help your paint stick better. If you think of trying to get paint to stick to something smooth like a marble or glass, it's just gonna cake and flake off because it has nothing to stick to. So doing a scuff sand is gonna rough your surface, surface up. It's gonna give some teeth to your paint to stick to, and you're gonna end up with better results. To scuff sand, you can go about it two ways. You can do it by hand. These are both very fine sandpapers that I have on here, about a 220. You're just scuffing up the surface. So by hand, use a rad pad, just put a little bit of elbow grease on it. If you want it to go a little bit faster, investing in an orbital sander, you can get one of these for around $45, $50, and they're gonna help you out. And you're gonna be able to use it around the house a lot. When you're scuff sanding, you don't have to remove the existing finish on there. You just wanna see it really dull and roughed up. So that's what I've done here. Once you scuff sand, you wanna make sure that your piece is free of dust. So I just have a damp cloth here and I'm gonna wipe back that dust. This table is kind of old fashioned and I'm trying to get away from this distressed farmhouse look in my house. So I'm gonna try to modernize it, but there's only so much I can do. But these trestle type of tables are still really popular on our house and restoration um, hardware, but this is definitely dating this piece. So what I'm gonna do is try to remove this and then my plan is to paint it a really on trend color. So I'm gonna do a really blue black to kind of deepen it and make it a lot more moody.
Okay, those were pretty easy to get out. I am left with this big trough here, but I think when I get the black paint on there, I might not notice that much. So I'm gonna do my first coat, see what it looks like. I can always fill it later before I do the second coat. But right now I'm gonna get my paint going. Okay, the paint I'm using today is a chalk mineral paint. This is specifically designed to go on furniture. You don't wanna just grab any latex paint or paint that you have out in your garage. That stuff is designed more to go on walls and other features like this, but this paint is gonna stick to furniture really well, so that's why I like to use it. So this is really thick. Um, I'm just gonna eyeball this. This isn't an exact science. I'm gonna start with about an ounce of water, mix it in and see how it goes. That's looking pretty good. I did about 12 ounces of paint and about one ounce of water. Okay, now that my paint's ready, I am gonna use a Dixie Belle Synthetic Angled Mini to put my paint on. This is a nice, smooth, synthetic brush. And since I'm going for a smooth look, I like to have a water bottle on hand and I'm gonna kind of mist my brush and my paint as I go to keep it nice and smooth. This first coat, I'm not too concerned about it being perfect. You just kind of want to get it on there and not overwork it too much. People always ask, how do I keep brush strokes out of my paint? When you're hand brushing, it's pretty much impossible to do that, but there are tricks to keep it smooth, like spraying your brush as you go. And we can also sand in between coats to help with that smoothness. When I'm doing tabletops like this, I like to go from the shortest distance from side to side, um, just because my paint's gonna dry pretty quickly. So I wanna keep this wet edge as best as I can. And I'm gonna keep all the brush strokes going in the same direction. When you're doing around curves like this, you just wanna watch for big drip marks so you don't have to sand those down later. That's why I really like this angled brush because it helps me get in these crevices and smooth everything out. And on this first coat, since I'm going from white to a really dark color, it's not gonna have full coverage on this first coat. So don't freak out and try to cover every little bit. That's gonna happen on our additional coats. painting takes a lot of time you guys but it's gonna be worth it so I'm gonna let this dry for about two hours I'm gonna get a second coat on tonight off camera and I will see you in the morning welcome back to day two of the table makeover I have done most of the second coat off camera but I left one portion just to show you guys the difference between the coverage of one coat versus two coats we're gonna be great with two coats and be able to work into sealing today but first I want to show you a little bit of how I do that second coat I'm just gonna grab my paint paint it on the exact same way but I do thin this out just a little bit more so I have four ounces of paint here I'm gonna add one ounce of water and then I'll just show you how I paint on that second coat. Okay, I talked about yesterday, when you are painting with a brush, you are gonna have brush strokes. Now this step is not necessary, but it's gonna help you get a little bit of a smoother finish. So I like to grab the super fine yellow rad pad, and I'm just gonna go back and forth against the grain of the way that I painted to smooth it out just a little bit. hand is a set of little artist brushes like this in case you need to get into any detailing. I have a little lip on the edge of this table, so this is just going to help me get into this little crevice right here. Once your paint is dry for two hours, you can go ahead and top coat. I'm going to use the clear coat in flat. 
I really like this one for beginners because I think it's really forgiving. You're gonna see less brush strokes um, and it's gonna give you a good protective finish. This is what I use like nine times out of 10 on all the furniture that I do. And the good news is, is I can use the brush that I already have that I use to paint to apply this. So I'm gonna use the brush on most of the spots and then on the flat top, I'm gonna use this foam brush. So I'll talk to you a little bit more about that when we get to the top. And another tip for you, because I'm using a dark color, you don't want this to cloud or haze. So you can just take a little bit of your paint that you're using and drip that in there. And we're gonna stir it in there really well. And that's gonna help avoid any hazing or clouding of the top coat. Now this is a lot thinner than my paint, so I'm really gonna watch out for these drips and globs. I'm gonna do a really light coat. Don't be freaked out by this white pigmentation of it. It's gonna dry down really clear and really flat. Okay, now that I'm moving to the tabletop, I wanna to try to make it as smooth as possible again. So just like I did in between painting, I'm gonna take this really fine sandpaper. I'm gonna go against the grain of the way that I painted it to kind of smooth out some of these lines. I'm gonna use really, really light pressure. I don't wanna take a lot of paint off. I'm just smoothing back the surface before I add the top coat. So I wanna get all this dust and debris off before I start top coating. So I'm just gonna take a microfiber towel and wipe all that back. Now for the tabletop, I'm gonna use this foam brush. Again, I think this is the easiest way to do top coat for a beginner. You could definitely just use that brush that I used on the base, but I think you're gonna be a lot happier. It's gonna be a lot smoother and easier with this foam brush. avoid drips and globs on the sides, I like to start in the middle and then I work my way out to the end and you wanna overlap the last section that you did that's called having a wet edge. So I'll get this on and then I'll come over to the other side, get a little bit more product on here, spread it out as much as you can. And then I'll take one long stroke all the way from the end back to the other side to get rid of any stop start marks. And then I'll just do it all over again. While I'm down here painting, I wanted to mention I didn't end up filling this hole because it doesn't bother me that much. And honestly, once you get the chairs put in here, no one is ever gonna notice. So don't put yourself through extra work if you don't have to. Okay, so this is set for two hours, so it's ready for another coat. And in the meantime, we have a thunderstorm going on outside, but we're gonna move on. Um, to get this ready for the second coat, I'm not gonna sand in between because it doesn't look streaky or anything to me. So I'm just gonna take this microfiber cloth and wipe back any dust that may have fallen while this was drying. And then I'll just go ahead and put on that second coat. So just to remind you, here is what we started off with and here is the table after. So this makeover is complete. You can add as many top coats as you want. Usually three coats is really good protection. Just make sure you're letting it dry two hours in between putting that on. But what a difference the power of paint can make, you guys. And I did this makeover for under $150. You can get all these products on the Dixie Belle website and you can flip your table just that easy. You don't have to be an expert. Don't get too like nitty gritty about everything that you're doing. This is how I started learning painting. This table is one of the first things that I painted and now I've given it some new life for, you know, years to come. 
So this is going to be a larger part of a entire dining room makeover, but I couldn't fit all of that into one video. So definitely stay tuned because I want to find some chairs for here, a new light. I'm going to tackle my hutch. I'm going to make over the mantle area. So definitely stick around for that on my channel. Thanks again for being here, you guys. I will be back soon with another project and I will see you next time.